Hello and welcome to part two of choosing your base van. And don't worry, if you haven't seen part one, it isn't important that you actually watch that first. You can actually watch that afterwards. Your base van for your dream camper van. Enjoying on beautiful days like today, it is fantastic. We're gonna, today, we're gonna be talking about choosing between short wheelbase, long wheelbase, barn doors, tailgate, service history, mileage, and how you can avoid actually buying a complete and total wreck. So the first thing we wanna be looking at, if we're not buying a brand new vehicle, is the service history. And that's pretty obvious, right? Everybody does it. Well, no, it isn't. You know, not everybody does it. Service intervals on these Volkswagen vans has actually changed over the years. And you do need to make sure that you check for your specific model that the intervals are within the required limits. Now, the maximum you should really be going is 18,000 miles or a maximum of two years. Now, this is important not only for the changes of fluids and filters, your oil filter, air filter, pollen filter, your brake fluid, your oil fluid, etc. but there's also lots of other components as well. Now, you may think, yeah, well, I get them checked on the annual MOT. Well, you don't. The MOT isn't there to check certain items. And if you're not having a proper full service done, these items are not gonna be inspected. Now, if the service history of the van which you're buying consists of a few receipts because the previous owner has actually done the oil and filter changes themselves. It doesn't necessarily mean that they've actually done the other parts of the service as well. Bits which can wear out in time. Most DIYers won't be doing the full checks, which a lot of the services which you can buy from garages actually include. Your timing belt, your water pump, your tensioners, they should be done every four years there is actually a time on this which you should have it done and i did see on one of the facebook groups recently that somebody hadn't had it done within four years it wasn't too long afterwards it was just about five years and it had actually snapped now that can cause some serious engine damage to the engine it needs to be done on time make sure it is done on time now the service history isn't just the engine it's the suspension, tires, air conditioning, the battery. There's lots of components that can wear out over time. So have these been replaced? Have they been serviced? Have they been checked? Make sure you know what the service history is of what the vehicle is you're buying. Next, and something else which is really important and also will have a big reflection on the price you pay. And that's the mileage on the vehicle. Now, the mileage on the vehicle it's a commercial vehicle and a lot will say that these vans go on for hundreds of thousands of miles and yes that is very true they do you will often see a lot of them advertise for a hundred thousand miles 120 150 and some people will tell you those are the ones which you've got to buy because all the problems that the vans will have had have now been replaced but that isn't true is it because if they go wrong at 60,000 miles like some people will tell you, if they've done 120,000 miles, those problems are gonna go wrong again. So have a think about it, think about it logically. It might not be a bad van, but make sure again, you do check it out. Mechanical equipment suffers wear and tear. Things need to be replaced. And that's why the service history is really, really important. A vehicle which has done 150,000 miles, which has got a really good service history, might actually well be better than a vehicle with 40,000 miles, which hasn't actually been to see a garage for the last five years other than an MOT. So the service history and the mileage are really important, but this goes on to the RAC, the AA, and police vehicles, which you'll often see for sale, and a lot of people snapping them up at bargain prices, but these have been maintained, they've been looked after, they've been respected, and they can actually be a very good buy because you know that all the maintenance that should have been done has been done and it's been done to a high level. So don't be put off by high mileage vehicles, but just make sure you do your homework and actually you know what you're buying. Now, if you're gonna be doing a lot of miles and a lot of long journeys, then maybe that 300,000 mile vehicle, which you've seen at a bargain price, isn't actually for you. I know it wouldn't be for me. I use mine as a daily driver and I wouldn't want that kind of mileage but there's nothing wrong with a high mileage vehicle, especially if you're only gonna be doing shorter journeys, only using it occasionally. If it's well looked after and well maintained, then you could save your money and you don't have to be buying a 50, 60,000 pound van. You could be buying one for much less and then having that money to spend on other things. 
But don't forget, it's not just about the engine and how many miles it's done. It's the suspension and the other different components on it. And that also goes for the conversion. The conversion, which has been in that van, has it been in there for a number of years? How worn is it? How is the bed? How is the seat mechanism? How is all the individual components, the cooking, the gas, the electrics, have they been checked? Have they been tested? There's a lot more to it than just buying a van and looking at the mileage of the vehicle. There's lots of other things that can wear out. And don't forget gas insulations. Did you know that the pipes are actually dated because they can actually perish? Things like that need to be tested. And also the electrical systems in vans, the wires are actually prone to be moving around. They can fray, especially if they've not been secured correctly. If you've got one of these solar panel installations where they've not actually used a gland, then those cables could be frayed. The connections can move with the vibration of the vehicle and can actually come loose. These things need checking out, things to consider. Make sure that you know exactly what you're buying. And also, do you know the history of the vehicle? There's lots of websites you can use to check this out. Has it been involved in an accident? Is there outstanding finance in it? You can use these websites to find out and create a picture of how that van has been in the past and is there any red flags which you need to be aware of before handing over your hard-earned money. Next, and onto the wheelbase of the vehicle. I've got the short wheelbase. The transporter comes in two wheelbases, the short wheelbase and the long wheelbase. Now, the long wheelbase is only actually 40 centimetres longer than the short wheelbase. This doesn't sound an awful lot, but actually, physically, with inside the vehicle, it makes a huge difference. And lots of people who've got camper van conversions and they have the long wheelbase, they do swear by them. Now, again, this is something which it might not be on your wish list. It might not be what's required for you. It certainly isn't for me. I do know that a lot of the car parks which I go in, I'm actually kind of really on the edge anyway with my short wheelbase transporter. But if I had a long wheelbase, I really, really would struggle. So it isn't for me. But could you benefit from that extra room which you've got as far as the camper van's concerned? Do you not use yours as a daily driver? And if you don't, then would that benefit of that extra space be better for you? But then again, if you are going for a long wheelbase, could you actually consider maybe a crafter, which is even bigger? And oh my word, they provide so much more space. They are a completely different vehicle. Really, you wouldn't be daily driver in a crafter, but you do get a heck of a lot more room inside them. Much better for a camper van conversion. A lot more conversion companies are now actually converting crafters. I've seen more and more cropping up, and I've actually heard there's more conversions in the pipeline for some other converters. As far as Volkswagen's concerned in the transporter, you've obviously got the California, but you've also got the Grand California. Now that might not necessarily be the best bigger conversion. There are lots of others available, but just have a look and just see how much more you actually get in that much bigger vehicle, but also at a much bigger price. Now next, and the often debated barn doors versus tailgate. Now, some say you should only have barn doors if you're going to be loading with a pallet truck because obviously it's much more difficult with a tailgate, but that's not strictly true. Each of them do have the benefits, the pros and the cons. Now, mine is the tailgate model and I do prefer it. A lot of conversion companies won't actually buy the barn doors because the tailgate is more popular and they know that they're going to be able to sell the tailgate a lot easier than they are the barn doors. The tailgate is the more desirable model. A lot of people just prefer the look of the tailgate. I mean, looks are subjective. Now that's either one person's opinion or another. A lot of people don't actually like the hinges which are visible on the barn door model. That's not really something that bothers me, but it's just one of those things which is subjective. Practicality wise, gaining access from the rear from the barn doors is a lot easier than it is in the tailgate. You don't actually need as much room as you do on the tailgate. As you can see when I open this, you need a lot of room. You need a big space behind the tailgate to actually be able to open it fully. So if somebody's parked close to you, you're not gonna be able to gain access to the tailgate. But with barn doors, 
you've only got to open them a little bit so you can actually gain that access. So that's one positive for barn doors. However, a big positive for the tailgate, which you don't get with the barn doors, is shelter. Now today, I can hide under this and you can see that I'm being sheltered by the sun. Great. And that also goes if it's raining. If it was raining, I can be sheltered from the rain. You can get around this as far as barn doors is concerned and you can get a canopy to go over the top. You can even actually get one for the tailgate as well, which forms a bit of a, a tent and some people use them so you can actually have a shower. They'll put the shower here on the tailgate and then have it in an enclosed area and then you're able to actually have a shower in privacy. As far as storage is concerned, on the tailgate you can actually get a storage compartment which can be fitted here and it can store tables and chairs in. The California Volkswagen's own camper van comes as standard, but there's also now aftermarket companies that are also producing them. They're not exactly cheap, but you can do it. Whereas with the barn doors, you can open the barn doors up and you've actually got storage in the side of the doors. You can also have storage pockets in the barn doors, storage nets to put your belongings in. Obviously they don't work as well on the tailgate because once you lift it up, everything's just gonna fall out. But these are really useful if extra storage is something which you want for the barn doors. But what about the carriage of bikes? Well, the barn doors, you can actually only carry a maximum of two bikes on a bike rack on the back of barn doors. Whereas on the tailgate, you can actually have four bikes being carried as long as you've got the correct spoiler. But that's another video. But additionally, you do need to make sure that you've actually upgraded the struts but when you're doing that, do be careful because I rated mine and did have a bit of an accident. But as you can see now, these are really, really strong. And that is so it can actually take the weight of those bikes on the back. And again, if you do opt for the chair pods in the back of here, you will actually need to upgrade the struts. But these, which I've got, are the very, very stiff ones. You can actually get a medium one, which a lot of people do prefer. But the 25 quid to change, bargain something simple mod which you can do but if you did want to carry four bikes and you've only got a barn doors you can have a tow bar have a tow bar with a rack on the back and then you can carry up to four bikes on that as well so there are ways of getting around these things but another benefit which you get with a tailgate especially if you've got dogs or you just want to improve the ventilation within the vehicle you can actually get an air vent lock which connects to the tailgate and will leave the tailgate slightly ajar so you can actually have it like that which then provides that additional air circulation so it'll keep it cooler and also when you're sleeping in the vehicle if it is a bit of a cooler night then it'll actually prevent the condensation or certainly help with that condensation build up on the windows which let's face it nobody wants now something else which you might not have thought about is single slider or twin slider it's actually perfect to have a twin slider. You can actually open the siding door and gain access to the vitals, your gas tank, your water tank. Some people have twin sliders on campervan conversions. It's not a crazy idea as you might think, but if you've not got a campervan conversion, then definitely a twin slider is really recommended. The amount of times I've been out in a campervan having had a twin slider, and I've opened the driver's door and then tried to open the door to actually get in the back and I've not been able to. Twin slider for me is really, really practical and I like it. And it's not a crazy idea, as I say, for a camper van conversion because you can access the back of your units. You can fill up your water tank, change your gas bottle just by opening that door. So even if you do have a camper van, twin slider is not out of the question. I personally really like a twin slider, but if I did end up going for a camper van, then most of the conversions are single sliders. So I might have to just live with a single slider. So what's best for you? Only you can decide. If you haven't seen part one of this, you can see that here. And if you're interested in lots more transporter videos, there's loads of them here. For now, take care. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon.